so welcome to the lecture on automatic control system in this lecture we are going to discuss the design process for a control system so in the previous lecture we discussed that there are certain design objectives for a control system like transient response steady state error and stability so we can deduce some process for design because design is a process for any system and when it comes to a control system we should have some process that must be followed so a control system of course it is a physical system consisting a process or a plant and some other elements they they have certain functions and there are each controller that has certain functions so it is a physical system that has been evolved from the design of a system now if we have an existing system a existing physical system how we should analyze or if we have some idea of a physical system how we should start with to analyze this system and redesign this system so we can see here so control system design process it has certain steps so the first step step 1 that is physical system specifications as per the requirements step 2 is draw a functional block diagram step 3 is draw a ischi schematic diagram step 4 is modeling let's say mathematical modeling or oblique block diagram step 5 is so if there is multiple block we can reduce to a single block step 6 is analysis design and test
So, these are the six steps to uh, as a design process for a control system. So, step one, we have an existing physical system or existing system and we have to upgrade this system because this system is not going to meet the required output, desired output or the specifications. So, we have to upgrade this system. So, we have to redesign the control system or if it is a new system, it is in form of idea and we are going ahead with that idea. So, we get some initial rough idea of the system, some components and assemblies. So, we have some physical system and we expect certain specifications regarding the performance because we discussed that we have some th basically three performance spe specifications like transient response, steady state response or steady state error and stability. So, if we have a physical system and we can set the specifications in the first step for the control system and then step 2 we will draw a functional block diagram. So, functional block diagram we know that this system will be made of several components and each component we can represent as a block. So, we can represent as a block So, this is a block and a block has certain input and certain out output because we know that a control system is again the assemblies of certain components that are assembled such a way that they will perform certain functions, desired output, desired performance at a specific input. So, each component will have certain input certain output. This output will go in some another component as an input and then that system subsystem will give certain output. So, we for each of the component we will make a block diagram functional block diagram. Here there is a difference between block diagram and functional block diagram. So, this is a functional block diagram. we will name the component and its function. So, here the name of the component and its function. What is its function? We will write like this and we will represent this physical system in terms of as a continue continuous assemblage of the functional block diagram. So, the next system So, then here second system, then function what is its function and so on. We will make this block, uh, this function block diagram. Then the step 3 is a schematic diagram. So, from the physical system for each component, we will make a schematic diagram. So, what is a schematic diagram? So, we know that a component can be a mechanical component, it can be electrical component or electronics component. So, mechanical components such, such as it could be a spring, damper, some mass, inertia. Electrical component it can be a motor, okay, a potentiometer some electronic component it can be a amplifier or power amplifier some controller so each of these components we will make a schematic diagram means we will represent 
it as a mass inertia resistance if there is a resistance we will represent as a resistance inductance so we are going to more entering into the inside that component and representing the actual elements of that component now when we make a schematic diagram in the first diagram of the design process we can make a simple schematic diagram for example if we have some potentiometer know that potentiometer has certain friction or inertia we can neglect this in the beginning we can assume that potentiometer is functioning instantaneously giving the voltage without any inertia without any friction and we will get that schematic diagram and similarly for other components once this schematic diagram is made from this schematic diagram we will come to mathematical modeling because we have defined each component in terms of its basic elements and these basic with certain assumptions we have neglected some non linearity we have neglected some mass inertia we have neglected some friction so we have a simple schematic diagram and for each of these elements there is some mathematical models mathematical functions and so we will do mathematical modeling and the mathematical modeling is this mathematical modeling can be done in various ways so this mathematical modeling we can use the differential equations so we can use differential equations if there is a mechanical system we can apply newton's second law and we can get the differential equations for for this system if there is electrical component we can apply kirchhoff's laws of current and voltage and we can get again the differential equations for the system or we can use frequency domain approach like transfer functions oblique block diagram because block diagram if we convert this in a block diagram we will represent here the transfer function in this block so this is transfer function so this is block diagram that contains the transfer function of the system we will discuss transfer function in detail in the in some next lectures but here you sh we should understand that we convert in this step for the mathematical model we can make either by differential equation with transfer function block diagram or some state space approach is state space model so this is the this transfer functions approach is valid for linear time invariant systems but state space approach or state space model is valid for also for non linear and time varying systems so these are few models modeling approach we can use any of these so here we will use transfer function or block diagram approach in the beginning of this course as it is much intuitive approach 
it gives more information v uh, more graphical information and quick information so this is schematic diagram from we get the block diagram now this system can have several blocks because one block for each component and so there could be several blocks and these several blocks there should be one main input and the last system will give the final output the last component output will be the final output of the system and the first components uh, input will be the main input of the system a specific input so these several block diagrams we can reduce in a single block diagram in step number 5 so we can reduce these block diagrams in a single block diagram and that has this input and this has this output so it means this block diagram is for complete system and so we know that this is the input we are giving and this is the output we are we are, this is the specific input that we give to the system and this is the output that we are going to get from that system and so this is the step number 5 now anal analysis design test redesign the last step 6 we do analysis we said that analysis is a process through which system sub performance is assessed so we give input and we get output and we see wh what is the response of the system so we are going to get the response of a system so from this response we are going to give input and we are getting the response from this response we will see whether we are going to get the desired response and the desired specifications that we required the specifications that we required are we going to get these specifications or not now here in the design process we should understand that in the design process we don't know exactly what input we will get from the in the practical applications so there are certain test inputs that we must use so the test inputs so that could be impulse input there could be step input there could be ramp input or parabolic input or harmonic input so there are certain test inputs like impulse input step input ramp input parabolic input harmonic input and these different inputs give different 
performance specification, information of the different specifications like impulse input. So, we give some impulse at this time t equal to 0, we get some delta t very high value and it will give the transient response. It impulse will give the transient response of the system and so the information about the transient response, transient specification of the system. Similarly, step input, this is the step input, we give certain constant value and so it will give the transient response as well as steady state response, both information, this is state, step input. Similarly, ramp input, ramp input with time, so ramp will give the information about steady state error or steady state response. Similarly, this parabolic input will give also the steady state error and harmonic input that is if we give sin omega t, a sin omega t as a input, it will give us both the transient as well as steady state response information. So, we can give these inputs and we can see the outputs and we can see that whether the system is going to give the specification that we required or not. So, we analyze, this is analysis we are doing. We already design and we test because we are giving test inputs. If not, we will redesign. How we will redesign? If not, because this block diagram will contain each component's parameters. Because this block diagram is coming from the functional block diagram that each component had has some parameters and so if we change that parameter what will be the change in the output. So, in this way we will be able to redesign the system. Now, we take one example and we will discuss this process. So, here let us take an example of antenna azimuth position control system. So, this is a radio telescope antenna and this is a physical system. We have certain requirement of the performance specifications of this system. Suppose this is a system we want to see the effect of a particular system parameter on the performance of the system. So, we have a physical system. Now, you see in this antenna, we are giving an input that is desired azimuth angle input at the input of the potentiometer. So, there is a potentiometer shaft and on that shaft we are rotating. We are giving some angular input and we want to get the output, angular output that is the positioning of the antenna. So, that output we want to get a space a desired output that if we give certain specific input that antenna should give the desired output angular output. Now, how to analyze how to design this system using the design process of the control system. So, here we can see the first step the system concept physical system we have to define some specifications of the system as per requirement. So, we assume that we know there is some specifications for this type of system. So, if we have this physical system, we have to see what are the components of the physical system because this system is made of certain components. So, you can see here we have potentiometer, here is potentiometer, then 
एम्पलीफायर पावर डिफरेंशियल एम्पलीफायर एंड पावर एम्पलीफायर देन देर इज अ मोटर देन देर आर द गियर सिस्टम्स एंड दिस गियर सिस्टम इज कनेक्टेड टू द शाफ्ट दैट रोटेट्स द एंटीना एंड सो द आउटपुट इज कमिंग एट दिस साफ्ट ऑफ दिस मिडल गियर फ्रॉम दिस गियर देर इज अनदर शाफ्ट दैट इज कनेक्टेड टू पोडेंसियोमीटर एंड गिविंग द फीडबैक टू दिस एम्पलीफायर so this is the step 1 we try to understand the physical system we try to express the system as a components physical components now the step 2 is functional block diagram now we can you can see here we have made the functional block diagram we have made the component and their funct the function so here is angular input that we are giving to potentiometer and there is some it is transducer that converts this angular input to a voltage proportional to the input then there should be some junction that is getting the error or actuating signal this signal is going to controller that is signal and power amplifier and this controller now it gives this is our process or plant that is motor load and gears these are the the power is going to run this system it is going to run the power motor motor is going to run the gears and gears are going to run the shaft of the antenna to position it at the desired angle now there is a feedback loop this is a closed loop system you can see we, the angular output is going to be feedback through potentiometer and back to the summing junction here and this error again is going to feed in the controller so this is a functional black diagram showing the the name and function of the diagram and flow of the signal now step 3 we are going to make the schematic diagram so you can see here we are representing each component as the basic element like potentiometer there is some resistance then power amplifier that is simply the gain then there is a motor here potentiometer we neglect the inertia or friction in motor there is armature armature may have also resistance and inductance but we are neglecting the inductance of the armature then there is the fixed field here the gear we are representing this lines A, a gear as a lines and these two gears then inertia and damping you see the antenna will have certain inertia because we are going to rotate to position the antenna and there is some friction and this friction is represented as viscous damping equivalent viscous damper again this gear is connected to the gear through potentiometer giving feedback that how much angle actually is rotated this system so this is step number 3 we have got the schematic now come to the mathematical modeling here we use the transfer function the block diagram so here is the block diagram so each component of the each component of the system is represented as a block and inside the block is the transfer function of that system we will discuss transfer function in next class uh, next uh, some classes uh, so there is transfer function each block has certain input certain output and that summing junction then input output so these each component can be represented as input output block diagrams now this is step number 4 so step number 5 we reduce to a single block so we are going to get the equivalent block diagram that represent the complete systems so block diagram complete systems transfer function in that block so here we only give input we are going to get output now this system we can and use for the analysis because this block diagram the transfer function will contain the parameters of the individual systems and we can change a parameter we can see what is the 
what is the variation in the output how the output is changing for example we can see one example you can see that the gain gain of the amplifier you can see if we have high gain this is our function the output and if we have low gain so here gain means you can see here this is the amplifier gain k so this k we are changing if we are going to give high gain we are getting this and if we have low gain we are getting this so wh why it is like this because if we have high gain means the if there is error function coming multiplying to high gain so motor is running faster in this and so when motor runs it starts and runs faster it overshoots the values it goes higher due to the inertia and then it later it catches to the steady state value but if the amplifier is gain is low the you multiply the error between the input and output with this lower gain so there is low value for the motor and the motor will run slower and so it will not overshoot but it will follow this curve so now you can understand that depending on we can measure the steady state error the transient response and we can change the value of k and see the effect of the gain parameter on the response of the system and so if we are not satisfied with the response we can redesign we can change the amplifier and we can redesign the system so again this uh, uh, we refer the books of uh, norman s nice and k ogata for this course thank you for uh, your attention and let's see in the next lecture thank you